Hi and welcome back to the channel. Um, I've gone rootling through the box of part part started kits um, and picked this out as the thing I'm going to uh, try and finish off next. So <clears throat> some of you may have remember this has appeared uh, on the channel before. Um, it's the chassis for the IP Engineering um, 16mm scale um, Shelley tram locomotive. So it's a um, gauge adjustable um, chassis, so you can have it as either 32 or 45 millimeter. You can move the, the wheels around. I did a video um, about the problems with that. It was one of the first videos where I actually spoke, I think, um, <clears throat> and how I went about uh, making sure that it did actually um, adjust. I'll try and find the link and put it up here. Um, but other than having assembled, tested, and painted uh, the chassis after it went rusty, um, I haven't done anything with the actual body kit as yet um, and I decided it was high time that I, I, I try and finish off uh, this kit and do another another large another large scale uh, model rather than the tiny little 009 stuff that I've been doing recently um, <clears throat> so the body for this and if you don't know what the model the Shelley tram looks like it's what essentially Toby in uh, Thomas and Friends uh, but without the face um, so it's a bit of a weird one because obviously it's a standard gauge uh, locomotive um, but runs on the the 32 or 45 millimeter gauge track so certainly running on the 32 millimeter gauge is is quite narrow but anyway it is what it is um, and yeah I'm building it regardless <coughs> um, so yeah that's the, the set of instructions um, all the parts are kind of, well, most of the parts are laser cut uh, ply. There is a pre curved, it's a bit big to get on the camera, pre curved uh, roof that needs lots of holes drilling in it and things, but there's a nice uh, pre curved, so I won't have to roll the metal. Um, but you've got parts like, oops, uh, like this, uh, which is one of the side, uh, side panels. So you can see it's got uh, plank lines. Um, there's a cut into it but it's missing the rest of the kind of plank detail window frame surrounds and things like that so they all need kind of putting on gluing on cutting to length etc um so that's that's my plan you can get an idea of the kind of the size of this thing it's it's yeah, it's, it's gonna be big i might need to find a better way of um positioning the camera um so that we can get more in the shot uh when i when i get more of this done um but i have made a small start on the on the body um so essentially I've put together the floor um, downwards or at least made a kind of four-sided up and box. Um, so the sides I've got, um, again, plank lines, holes, you know, kind of uh, holes for climbing into the into the loco um, on the real thing. Um, obviously this has, because it's a tram loco that would have run on a street track, um, you don't see the wheels so it's got kind of tram standard tram skirts so when you put the the chassis inside the box the wheels are kind of pretty much hidden everything's pretty much hidden it's rides quite low quite low to the ground um <clears throat> which we'll come back to in a minute because there is a slight slight issue with that um but this was all nice and straightforward to put together um i used the gauge blocks i'll put up a photo showing how i did it but the gauge blocks to kind of hold everything nice and um, square while while it glue while the glue dried um, yeah I haven't used these very much but if you've not seen these before these are great so they're really heavy um, lots of holes so you can kind of bolt them to tables and things but I use them because they're perfectly square uh, and they're heavy so you can kind of do things like making sure parts are held upright <coughs> and um, square to one another so you can you know you can do things like you know gluing parts together um, nice and nice and square and things like that um, which is what how I how I glued the the box together um, so there's not huge amounts um, as I said there's not much there just four parts glued together um, I have done some other bits and pieces so the the, the instructions say that you have to put uh, pencil lines down the very middle um, of the back side of these two side panels so I've done that um, this is actually the reason that um, I bought a tool that's appeared in a previous video. So if you remember, this is this center foot finding ruler. Um, and it makes finding the middle and drawing a drawing a line down really, really simple. 
Um, and I've actually used it quite a lot because um, you can see that there needs to be a line over here as well down the middle of this thing because essentially when you start assembling the sides the lines line up so that you can get them in the right in the right place uh, that's what that's all that's all that's all for um, but um, yeah so there are a couple of other bits of pieces I've done before that I'll mention just before we get to the, the problems um, so I filled in there are some holes for switches I'm going to do. I'm not going to use the wiring suggestion that came with it. So I filled these in, um, sanded them back. I think from a feel I'm going to have to kind of possibly a bit more putty and sand them back again. Uh, but I've made sure to keep the the plank lines and stuff and the mess from the putty and the the, the uh, dash modelling clay and stuff will disappear once this once this all gets painted. So that's fine. Um, and I've filled in a hole in the foot plate here, the yeah, the floor here, which obviously which actually isn't even mentioned in the kit. It's it's weird. The suggestion that the instructions say that that one's square when it's round and doesn't mention this one at all. Um, this one's for a speed control knob. I think the problem is that the instructions are for an original, the original release of the kit, and this is a second, at least a second release. Uh, and I think they changed the potentiometer they were using. Um, so the well in the current in the version I've got needs a round hole, whereas in the original version it needed a square hole. So I think that's the. That's the problem. Anyway, this one um, I probably won't use, but um, it's designed so that the brake stand covers the hole anyway. Um, so that will get that will get covered by the the casting for the the brake hole, brake stand. Um, so uh, what are the problems? Well, there are a number of issues. Um, we'll start with the buffer beams first. So. The kit contains two white metal castings um, where there's a hole in the middle and the idea is that the, the coupling block screws through that and into the into this piece. So you need to basically glue this on the end, um, it glues on flush to the top, drill through and, and do that. Um, but it says to mark out the hole using one of these. Now the problem is these are not the same size. So you can see if I hold them at the bottom they're not the same size. Um, even worse, the hole isn't quite in the middle. Um, so you can see the hole on these is pretty much aligned, but one's shorter than the other. So on one of them, it's definitely not in the middle. Um, and neither of them are a perfect match to the width of the of the of the body. So that's the longest one, I think, and it, it's not quite wide enough. Um, was that the longest one? Yeah, and that's the shortest one, and you can see how much shorter it is. So. Um, yeah, these don't match up. And you can also see that the hole, that's drilled in the centre. I, I did find, you can see there's a line down here. I did find the centre of the body, drew a line across, checked. These holes are in the middle. That's not. So I could just essentially try and get it into the middle, but then the hole's still not in the middle. If I put the hole in the middle, another part's off to one side. So I think, in all honesty, what I'm going to end up doing is remaking these. I think I'm probably going to 3D print some alternatives. Um, I mean, I could just make them out of plastic card and 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 add on the the nut, the bolt detail. But I think what I might do is just print them like I did um, the overlays for the um, Phil Sharples Simplex kit um, that has overlays down the side. Again, there's a video of me talking about that kit. I'll stick the link here um, where I printed something very very similar that goes all the way down the side of the of the models, give bolt raised bolt details. So I think I'm going to replace these with um, 3D printed versions. Um, the actual cow catchers on the front and back are also white metal castings. These are actually a bit, these are quite nice actually. I think from a bit of playing around, they're pretty much the right size. There's a little bit of fitment issue, but I think that they, they will just about basically fit. Um, but um, yeah, it's the, the, there's there's. It says that they have to be. They, see, you can. There's another issue here that this is supposed to be flush with the floor, but when I put it on with the cow catcher, it's too high up. So again, I'm going to do some measuring uh, and print some alternatives for those. I think. Um, but then we have another issue <clears throat> in the fact that there are two holes in this, which I assume are for attaching the chassis. They're not mentioned in the kit at all, but I assume that the plan was that they would go, they would screw these holes here. The problem, and you can, is if I put this over here, 
you can see that hole is through you can see the, the green mat through the hole just about but that one is into wood they don't line up um, and that is a bit of a pain um, so I worked out where they if I if I drilled new holes where they would go and you can see one is just there and one is just there so I can't really I can't really drill um, both holes and have the the chassis very set completely central because um, they're too close to the other holes so I think what I'm going to do is use one hole it's only a couple of millimeters so I think I'll use one hole attached to the, to the chassis and then drill another hole which should be far enough away from this one to not be a problem um, and my plan because <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet but my, my thinking is that um, I will have all the radio control stuff and everything else inside the body of the loco and that will mean that I probably want to be able to get the roof off so um, that so my thinking is that actually there's a there's a third there's a third screw here so what I might do to make life easy is essentially um, put screws up the, these holes on here are tapped so I'll put a screw up here to make a pin screw up this one to make a pin in fact I might not even need to, need to do that if I put a screw up one to make a pin and then um, drill a hole in the middle here what I can do is I can put the chassis down like that if we've got one screw up here as a pin that can go down and go through that hole, come up through that hole and then I can screw this one down inside the roof that will stop it spinning and hold it nice and square and I can fill the other hole in and that means I don't actually have to drill any more holes um, it does mean as I say that the chassis is ever so slightly off centre it's minimal I don't think it'll matter but I can't think of another good way of um, of doing it there's no way I could I mean I'd have to add another piece of material with a hole in it to get the screw to go through, and it, it, it just seems a it seems a mess so I think I'll have a pin essentially a pin coming up screw coming up at one end as a pin and a screw going down in the middle to hold it from from spinning and that should that should I think keep everything everything nice and level that's my plan at least um, there is one other issue notice this it wobbles when it's sat on the chassis um, and that's because these three points which you would expect to be the highest point they're bent over from the end beams um, and actually the highest point if you look at it sideways on uh, you can just about see the gearbox protrudes above the top of the chassis um, so I can't get the floor to sit level um, so I think I mean I could file this back but it's quite there's not there's not a huge amount of material here to file back um, and I don't want to uh, weaken the gearbox so I think what I'll do is actually just cut a small slot in the top of the chassis in the right place so this bit of gearbox um, will actually kind of come up through the floor given the the design of the of the loco um, all of that will be inside this central section <coughs> excuse me I've got a horrible cold um, will be inside the central section of the loco so you won't be able to see it I mean there are windows but it'll be be dark and I may I may even like frost those windows so you can't actually see um, see fully in um, so yeah that's the plan and I'm, I'm, I think what I'm going to do is kind of keep try and keep as I say keep the roof removable um, I may have to add some extra um, supports that aren't part of the model so that because otherwise this wall is separate from the middle body section so I might have to add a roof some kind of roof support or roof support up under here as well just to make sure it all stays together when I um, when I take the lid off um, but as I say that will allow me to essentially access the screw in the middle to go down into this piece <coughs> um, and yeah that should be all, should all work nicely so that's the plan lots still to do obviously um, <coughs> but um, yeah should make a nice a nice model when it's all when it's all finished um, and as I say not sure yet whether I'm going to do a face uh, for, for, Tom, for Toby um, having done lots of the Batman models recently and taking the faces off them I'm in two minds whether to add a face to this one again what I might do is make make a face up but make it so that it mounts with magnets um, 
so I can take it on and off when I want to um, either cheer up the children or I'll be a bit more serious. Um, not that I'm ever really serious with my too serious with my modelling anyway. Um, but my plan is also, as I say, I'm not going to do the electronics the way they suggested, which is why I've got rid of the switch areas. It will get a local remote. Um, I'm going to go with one of the ones that can do lights. So my hope is that the lamps on either end will have um, LEDs in them. They're actually LEDs with the kit. So um, I should be able to set that all up uh, nicely. But yeah, that's the plan. So um, hopefully it's, it doesn't look like a particularly complicated um, build once I can work out the issues with, um, with parts not quite fitting. Why do I always end up picking kits with parts that don't fit? Um, so hopefully it should move on uh, nice and nice and quickly and with the wood bit being a bit different to the, the kits I've done I've done recently. Um, so if you want to follow along, don't forget to find the subscribe link down here somewhere. Um, and um, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.